Girl and a multi-million selling debut album in the United States. But then they faltered. Then, last year, Heartbeat City, with four top ten singles from the United States, the top five drive in Britain, and the video for You Might Think that won the Best Video Clip of the Year award all over the world. We talked to Rick Okasek and Ben Orr of The Cars about their breakthrough, their renaissance, their award-winning videos. In 1977, you were getting quite a reputation around the Boston area, and you were getting a lot of airplay mm -hmm. locally. Now, when you are a big local group, but you're not anything elsewhere, how do you go about getting your fortunes raised? Well, we were lucky enough to be able to get some of our tapes on, on the radio, which was a, at that time kind of unheard of, but uh, we had a friend disc jockey who was a big fan of the bands and decided to play, you know, our tapes. And uh, we had some demos that we had done live two track tapes. And it, just from getting it played on the radio, that was, it was a, a big request, you know, item. Probably more so than any of the records at the time that were on the radio. So I think record companies noticed that and came around. And in a famous trip through a snowstorm, Roy Thomas Baker yeah. came to see you at a gate. That's right. In a big blizzard, he came to a high school where there was about 30 people. And uh, we just agreed that evening, actually, that we would make a record. So actually, and then we, the next thing we knew, we were on our way to London to uh, make the record. And it took all of 12 days to do. Well, you had all the songs written. This is the classic case of yeah, the band with the first album. We probably had two albums written, so it wasn't difficult. Well, Roy, at that time, was best known for Queen, for metal material. Mm -hmm. Was there any problem in agreeing how the sound should come across? None whatsoever, because we were totally naive about it at the studio. I mean, except the, the stuff that we had done in it, but we didn't know much about, <clears throat> you know, technique and all that business and we just sort of let Roy do what he wanted and uh, we since we we knew the songs you know it was very easy to just lay them down live and uh, every time we hear one back we'd be totally surprised you know maybe at the size of the drum sound or the everything sounded so huge to us compared to like you know <laughs> what we would sound like as, as live or whatever so it was it was you know every time we would hear something we would love it the first single to be released in Britain from that was My Best Friend's Girl. Mm -hmm. On the first single picture disc, mm -hmm. people tend to forget that, and it <laughs> leapt into the top ten. Mm -hmm. And some people wondered whether it was on the musical merit or on the lovely photo of the old automobile. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your reaction to that? Well, it was a, it was a, a single in America and it did real well without the picture disc, but uh, and in fact, when we were on tour in America, when we even heard that there was a picture disc out. Um, so it was an idea that was sort of consummated over here. And uh, we just thought it was thrilling that it jumped into the charts. But I, I don't know whether it was because of the picture disc or the song either. And while that record, My Best Friend's Girl, was a hit in, in England and all over Britain, just what I needed was Mm -hmm. the big one in the states right and that was the one that had had a lot of requests on radio wasn't it yeah exactly i don't want you hanging out and talking in your Many groups have a, a second album dilemma because the songs that they accumulated through the years, which were on their first album, are gone. They suddenly have to come up with a new album at exactly the same time that they're feverishly touring promoting the first one. Mm -hmm. Did you have problems getting together a full body of material for that album? Not for that one. It wasn't too much of a problem because we had quite a lot left over from the first, you know, or from our live performances. The only thing that happened was that the, the first album stayed in the charts so long that we sort of had to prolong the release of the second one. Yes, but, phenomenally, uh, that album stayed in the charts for about three years. Mm -hmm. An amazing achievement in the United States for a new group, especially. Mm -hmm. Let's Go was the hit single off of that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
the cover was a fascinating piece by Vargas, uh -huh. who had been renowned for his pinups of girls and Esquire and had retired. How did you lure him out of retirement? Well, it was an idea of David's, our drummers, to uh, go seek out Vargas. And we found him in L.A., actually, uh, living in a nice little side street, you know, and uh, living with his sister or something. And uh, actually went to his house and uh, knocked on the door and said, asked him if he would paint, you know, a cover for us, you know, with sort of a picture of a, you know, one of his girls on the cover, or on a car. And uh, he had been retired for about seven years or something, and I don't know, it just must hit him at the right time because he decided he would do it. Got wonderful eyes And a whiskey mouth I like the nightlife, baby She says Let's go! Well, you did have your biggest hit in the States, early 1982, with Shake It Up, mm -hmm. from that album of the same name. Mm -hmm. And uh, a very catchy hit single song. Had you ever conceived it as such? No, because it was a song that sat around for a few years, you know. And uh, it's sort of a f song that I just did for fun, and I actually didn't have any intentions of putting it on the record. in this country, uh, the bigger record from that album was Since You're Gone, mm -hmm. which did better here than, than in America. Yeah. Well, I like that one as well, even better <laughs> than Shake It Up. Mm. Heartbeat City, you had a fundamental change in having Mutt Langer mm -hmm. as your producer. Mm -hmm. Roy Thomas Baker, your former mentor, supervising now. Mm -hmm. What was the manifestation of change in the studio for that? Oh, it was quite a bit different because, see, Roy is more one to sort of let you do what you want and just get it down on tape and everything's a laugh and, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas Mutt is very serious and and a high level of concentration at the board and very much a perfectionist and, um, you know, so it was quite a bit different. It took a lot longer to do the record with Mutt, but uh, we, we enjoyed doing it. It just took a lot longer. It, actually, it was fun to come to, you know, uh, London and live for like five to six months. So that was actually the best part of it. At that time, I suppose you had faded from recent memory in this country, really. Mm -hmm. um, if I can be cruel. No, it's all right. Um, <laughs> what was it like to, again, be anonymous in a sense? I mean, it's very difficult since you're very characteristic looking physically to be totally anonymous, but was it an opportunity for you to recharge some kind of batteries? You mean when we came here, of yeah. course? Oh, yeah, most definitely. It was actually nice to walk down the street and not be too well known, you know. And, uh, you know, part of the reason that we came here in the first place was just for, you know, some of the inspiration and, and some of the energy that was here, you know. Uh, we did want to get away from the States and sort of recharge the batteries, so. Well, you had an ingenious plan of promotion by making a long-form video, as it's called, of the album, mm -hmm. which is called Heartbeat City. Mm -hmm. And you had various video producers and directors try their luck with you. Now, this is quite different from someone like, say, Duran Duran, who used Russell Mackay for their entire long-form video. Whose decision was it to go for individuals on certain tracks? Well, we just decided that, um, you know, the best way to get a video that might not look like all the others is to use uh, directors that hadn't made them before. And uh, so, you know, we went looking for people like that and uh, ended up using, you know, Andy Warhol for one and this uh, director named Jeff Stein for the You Might Think video. And Timothy Hutton, the actor, did one for Drive and uh, various other people. But uh, it just seemed, you know, logical that if you wanted to get something that didn't look like something else, maybe we should give shots to people who 
I hadn't made them before, so that it wouldn't be in that stock sort of video look. Well, in retrospect, it was a sensationally mm -hmm. successful decision. So if we may talk for a moment mm -hmm. just about some of these clips, mm -hmm. you might think, which won the first prize in both the MTV and the Saint Tropez competitions, mm -hmm. uh, is one which is enormously ingenious mm -hmm. in terms of special effects. Mm -hmm. But did this require a long time participation by the actual band? Yeah, it was, because we, we shot that video for a week. You know, it took a week of shooting, and it took two weeks of editing. So it was actually a whole three-week project, which is long for a three-minute song. It's like a week per minute. <laughs> so, uh, but everybody got so excited about it as we started to make it that it just kept going on and on, and we just, uh, the company that did special effects, Charlex in New York, uh, they had never done that before, and they just got real involved in their own equipment, really. And, and uh, so, you know, therefore, it came out very special. Well, in the case of Drive, a video which you mentioned was directed by the actor, Timothy Hutton. Mm -hmm. There is a woman who gives a superior performance of someone who is very emotionally disturbed. How did you find this unknown face? Uh, I think it was a friend of Tim's. Um, I'm sure Rick knows more about th that aspect than I, I do. But uh, it was a friend, uh, as far as I know, it was a friend of Tim's. And he uh, just worked mainly with the three of us for hours. Told us what he'd like uh, to have us do and the way we should you know we, we should feel the general concept of the song to him well rick th this was an extraordinary performance wasn't it mm -hmm. by this girl well there was you know they screen tested about 10 girls or something and it was just you know it was easy to make this decision her name is paulina poroskova she's a czechoslovakian girl and uh she just like fell right into the part it's like she was born to do it or something uh, and uh, so, you know, it wasn't hard for Tim to, to get that emotion out of her. And, and uh, we did just labor over the, the characters of it for, for days, and unlike any other video. Tim was insistent that we, you know, were the people that we should be in that video. And uh, after a few days of, of lecturing, you know, we all were like complete mental cases, you know. Uh, feeling like we were those people and that was really the you know the real bedroom the real set and it was so it was actually the, the first experience in in some real acting you know one example of the mix of opportunities is Andy Warhol's presence as well as mm -hmm. uh, his directorial credit on the Hello Again mm -hmm. video. Whose stroke was it to ask him to participate? Well, I, I called Andy because I've known him for a while and, and asked him if he would do a video and and uh, actually wanted to do it with a lot of 8mm because that was like his format in the 60s and uh, he has a TV show in New York too and uh, they did a lot of funny things with 8mm on the you know that so he just sort of jumped right in and said yeah i'll do it and uh then the second question was well will you be in it and he said oh definitely i'll be in it i'll, I'll just be i'll just be a bartender you know and uh he stood there behind that bar for like about four or five hours in that one position like just staring out you know into uh the bar and watching everything that was going on you know never moved he was like thoroughly enjoyed doing that you the other single you had from that in the states magic mm -hmm. had as a director an englishman mm -hmm. tim pope right this is your walking on water sequence yeah right uh, i assume can i guess can i ask you to give it away if there was some kind of transparent table on which you were standing in the swimming oh yeah it's easy to see actually you can see it in the last scene <laughs> and we left it in as well the fact that you could see it you know just uh for whatever reasons you know 
But uh, yeah, that was about it. I was standing on like this uh, plexiglass, you know, sort of, uh, you know, uh, platform, and which actually kept falling down all the time. And uh, none of the times I was on it, but many of the times the crew was on it, you know. And, uh, and so it was a little slippery and it was very small. So I was like uh, trying to keep one eye on the platform and <laughs> one eye on everything else. But I liked Tim Pope's work a lot, you know, and uh, and it was, I, I quite liked that video. Oh, God. 